Today we will start Unit 1, Lecture 1 on Control System Characteristics and Models. Note that we have four units for the lectures. Unit 1 is Control System Characteristics and Models. Unit 2 is Control System Analysis. Unit 3 is Control System Design. And Unit 4 is Digital Control Systems Analysis and Design. Note that many of these notes I are excerpts from Dr. Throne's notes and also several other texts on controls that I use as a reference. Today's lecture is on the introduction to linear control systems and block diagrams. The objectives for today's lecture are to be able to define automatic classical and modern control theory, to describe the difference between open loop and closed loop control, and to explain the purpose and draw each of the elements of an open loop and closed loop block diagram, and to derive the transfer function for a system given a system block diagram. Automatic control is essential to any field of engineering and science because it is used to design systems and controllers such that they operate around a given set point. Modern control theory is based upon the tying domain analysis of differential equation systems such as a spring, motor, damper, RLC circuits, and system states. Classical control theory is based upon the frequency domain analysis of a system, including the transfer function and output. For example, a car driving straight on the road is an example of a car control system. If the object is to keep the car driving straight on the road, and then the driver must make the system stable despite potholes, wind, rain, etc. If the system, in the system, the car is the object to be controlled or the plant. And the driver plays the role of the controller. Open loop control would occur if the driver decided to keep the car centered while his or her eyes were closed. This would not work well and it would be difficult to stabilize the car. Closed loop control would occur if the driver senses the deviation in the car position, determines the proper way to turn the steering to remain centered with eyes open, this type of control is called feedback control where the eyes of the driver serve as the sensor. A human controller must perform sensing, control, and actuation in order to be able to drive a car. Sensing would be observing the car's position, how far is the car from the center line, or how fast is the car going. Control would be to make decisions regarding what action to take, such as which way to turn the wheel. Actuation would be something that influences the motion of the car or the plant by turning the wheel or pressing the accelerator. In automatic control, machines or controllers must replace human beings to perform these actions. Here's an example of a wonderful control system created by Boston Dynamics.
appointed and select one person in class to work with and brainstorm to create a list of real world applications of control systems. Obviously, I'm biased, so um, since I do robotics, I will obviously say robotics, which has sensing, planning, and acting, so it's a real-world control system. Another example is a thermostat, as well as your body temperature regulation, and also a garage door, because there's a sensor at the bottom such that if a child or a dog runs underneath, the garage door will go back up. The general structure of a feedback system is a reference signal, such as the car position, which would be here. And the controller, which in this case would be the human driver, unless we're talking about an automatic control system. The actuator, which would be something like the steering wheel. And the plant, which would be the car. An example of a disturbance could be like wind, rain, or someone kicking it in the case of the dog for the video we just saw. And the output is the car position. Now the sensor could be something like um, visual feedback, the eyes of the human. Or if you're talking about something automatic, it could be the speedometer or the tachometer, depending upon whether you're trying to regulate the um, speed or something else for the car. Control systems can be divided into two classes. A regulator. A regulator is a control system that must maintain a physical variable at some constant value in the presence of a disturbance. For example, your body temperature should always be at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit unless there's some kind of disturbance like the flu, and then your body regulates to 100 degrees, which tells you that there's something wrong with the system. Another example is a servo mechanism. A servo mechanism is a control system that requires a physical variable to follow or track to some over some desired time function. My favorite example is a wall following robot. If it has to follow the wall at a distance of six inches over amount of time, it's supposed to do this despite any kind of disturbance such as wheel slippage, mismatched motors, error in the sensors, etc. Generally, a controller or a compensator is selected to use in order to get the error signal. And for the difference between the desired state or reference signal, that's called the error and you want it to meet some kind of criteria such as you want zero steady state error or you wanted to reject disturbances or you wanted to have certain transient response characteristics like settling time, rise time, percent overshoot, etc. or have sensitivity to parameter changes in the plan.